Hi friends, this is Representative Sarah Vance of House District 31. It is 2.46 a.m. Uh, on, let's see, I believe it is Sunday uh, the 29th now, and the legislature has officially recessed. Uh, we did not signy die. We did not finish um, this session so that we can return if need be to respond to the COVID-19 virus. Um, but we did finish our operating budget, part of the capital budget, and supplemental. It was a very challenging vote. Uh, we didn't m make it to the floor until 10.30 at night, and so uh, we just finished about an hour or so ago. That's why I'm up so late. And um, because I've been doing videos and telling you that I want to keep you updated, this is what I'm doing is to make sure that you can stay informed and um, just wanted to kind of highlight some of the things about the budget. What we voted on tonight was the concurrence with the changes that the Senate did on the operating budget. So they added the supplemental to it, which is uh, what fills the gaps in between last year's budget, this year's budget, and they also added part of the capital budget. So they were just trying to get it all done so that we could get home to our families. There was also COVID-19 response uh, funding in there as well and uh, the total is about 4.7 billion when you add the other funds to it it's about a 12 billion dollar budget um, it is much bigger than uh, what I'm comfortable with but the, the key things um, there were no budget reductions no economic stimulus uh, no full PFD no constitutional spending cap we have not uh, passed the Alaska Reads Act to help get our third grade readers proficient in reading, uh, but there was an additional 30 million added to education. Um, you know, there's, um, we, were, we were given uh, a pretty, I've talked about poison pills before, but this one takes the cake on, um, on what the leadership in um, the finance committees did and uh, they required, uh, they tied our three quarter vote um, to fund uh, the budget using up uh, more than 600 million of our savings account. But not only did they, they do that, uh, but they said that if we did not pass the three quarter vote threshold that uh, the COVID funding would not be paid, the $75 million for that, uh, that Alaskans would not receive a $1,000 PFD, they would only receive five hundred. dollars The budget um, would only be funded for eight months, and um, that um, PERS and TERS would be short funded by $85 million. So that's if we voted no, is that Medicaid wouldn't be paid as well. And um, they tied contingency language that said, if you don't vote the way we want you to, these programs will be funded. And um, I find that absolutely heartless. Um, COVID funding right now should have been the number one priority that uh, would be funded no matter what. And they didn't do that. They strong-armed and bullied uh, the, mi the minority and said, y you have to you have to vote this way or else the people will suffer. And, um, and many, many of you may be asking how, if you were watching on the floor, um, I voted no. And that was, that was really hard for me. Um, but I, I had a peace in my heart about the no because I couldn't get myself to swallow a yes vote to bullies. To the bureaucracy that continues to walk us down this path of bloated budgets and government spending for whatever projects they want when they leave Alaskans begging for begging for the permanent fund money that's theirs, begging for COVID funding, right? Saying, please help us, we're trying to feed our families, we're trying to pay our rent, we're trying to maintain the businesses that we have um, built with our bare hands. You know, um, I wanted to say, no, I'm not, I'm gonna stand up to this and I'm gonna do what I was elected to do. But I want you to know that my team also counted votes and there were people who wanted to vote no with all their heart. 
but they voted yes. And, um, and I want to give them my utmost respect before people go attacking the ones who voted uh, in the minority Republicans who voted yes. I want you to know that they, they did that because they understand how, how the politics work in this building, that the leadership of the finance chairs would have withheld those funds from Medicaid. They would have withheld the COVID-19 funding. They would have withheld the permanent fund funding and um, allowed enough of us to say no, that they only got just enough votes that they needed to be able to make the funding go forward. This was not done by accident. This is something that we all wanted to say, no, you can't keep doing this to Alaskans. And you heard the, the if you watch, you heard speeches on the floor. So, um, so that's why I voted no, is that I wanted to be true to, to my convictions, true to you. But it was not, it was not an easy thing. I've been uh, mulling it, you know, mulling it over for at least 24 hours, but then today they put in that contingency language having to do with the virus and the Medicaid funding. And um, putting Alaskans' lives on the line for a political reason um, is heartbreaking. Heartbreaking to me, but that's exactly what they did. And so, you know, I, I just want you to reach out and say, uh, I've heard from many of you, thank you for that. But I, I think that the other the other House Republicans and those in the Senate need to hear from you as well, um, because this was <laughs> this was some dirty pool, um, but it's done. Uh, the people do have uh, 15 million in COVID response. Um, in there's uh, Medicaid being paid. Uh, there's 75 million actually um, in this next budget uh, that starts on July 1st. We'll have 75 million to COVID response, 5 million to the De disaster relief fund. Uh, the feds have also already granted more than a billion dollars in um, COVID response that will be coming. Um, there's also a thousand dollar PFD in the fall. This is one of the things that I found was incredibly awful that they didn't provide economic relief to Alaskans right now. We could have done that very quickly. We don't know what the timing of the federal dollars coming in to provide for families. We don't know when that would come, but Alaska has a very quick and efficient way to be able to provide for you. And this majority didn't do that. Um, I, I struggle with the fact that they felt generous and co that they compromised by giving a thousand dollar PFD in the fall when the, they're breaking the law and they refuse to address the statute that changes the formula. So right now, the full statutory formula is being ignored and that money that is in the earnings reserve account is still rightfully yours. It is your resource wealth that you needed now. And they said, no, we're being generous by giving $1,000. And I think that's wrong because they would rather have you go ask government to be on their programs for assistance that families need right now than putting the cash directly into your hands. And that is fundamentally wrong to me. So um, so another reason why I said no is because um, there, there are people who need um, help right now. And there's a lot of good things that government does, but we also need to step aside and put money directly into the hands of people that's the way that we will we will support the economy right now is by allowing you to make the decisions of what's best for your family, especially during a crisis, because there's so many unique situations out there, and um, we we have an urgent uh, health crisis at hand, but it's the economic crisis that's coming that concerns me all the more because it will affect every Alaskan. There will be Alaskans that won't. Uh, that won't come down with the virus, but every Alaskan will be affected by the economy, and um, we cannot ignore that. And um, while we're on that topic, I do want to mention that there has been a Homer resident who has um, tested positive for the coronavirus, and I just want to let them know that I am praying for them, 
and uh, want to be there for them uh, the best that, that we can during this time and as a community. We can be supportive. We can continue to do the self-quarantine to make sure that we aren't spreading that in the community and uh, you know, pray that, that uh, we get through this uh, stronger than ever as a community and um, know that I'm fighting for you. I will be heading back to the district on Tuesday and will be quarantining at home with my family and resting. This has been a very fast whirlwind uh, session. We got done in a historic time, but it, things were rushed through. There were bills that were being added, through, added on uh, this last week that had large fiscal notes and um, things that were not getting proper public process. And I want good governance and I will continue to, to be able to work towards good governance and what's right for Alaska. And, um, you know, just want to thank you for um, being a part of the videos and sharing them. And uh, we'll try to keep you involved if there are changes with uh, the virus. I encourage you to watch Governor Dunleavy's announcements every day to keep up to date on what's going on and, um, you know, just help each other out during this time and call and give your neighbor a wellness check because isolation can be challenging and this is a time that we can be there for each other. So have a good night. Can't believe that there's so many of you up at 2.45, almost three o'clock in the morning. Crazy, crazy Alaskans. Somebody, if, if we weren't on quarantine, I'd say let's go get ice cream because this is usually the time of night that we can do that. <laughs> but, um, you know, you've, you've been great. Share the video, like my page, and uh, let's continue to uh, stay strong as Alaskans. So uh, get some rest, everybody. It's time to go to bed.